Okay, serious question. What am I doing wrong? Because I feel like I am always second choice. It's like I teach people how to be better and how to be in a good relationship. And then they go and use it on somebody else. And then I'm ghosted. They're in a solid relationship. Their communication skills have been fixed. And Becca's just over here, you know, sitting on her couch with her dog every fucking night because he's the only man that's ever going to love me right. Ghost is my dog, by the way. Yeah, we got it. We didn't think ghost is an actual ghost you're communicating with. But anyway, you're such a saint and you quote, unquote, teach people to be better. What that means is you keep bickering and arguing until the guy gives up. You think you taught him how to be better, but instead he just gave up on you. This video is exactly why I am so passionate about coaching women about true feminine energy, not cultural norms, not etiquette, not politeness, None of this bullshit that you're talking about in this video. True feminine energy is not only a portal to the divine, but it is the divine itself. It is life force energy. It is creation upon creation, abundance only. It is creativity, flow, nurturing, comfort. It's generosity, care, compassion. It is righteous indignation. It is the balancing of scales. I remember a blue skinned dude that tried to balance scales a few years ago. It didn't go well for him perfectly balanced this whole thing should be but at least he made sense i have no idea what she's talking about or if she's on an acid trip but either way i'll take two of what she's having so for my 21st birthday my boyfriend at the time drove from uh, miami to orlando to spend obviously the day with me all fun and stuff and he went to go pick someone up whatever he left his watch charging in my my room and I am very big on privacy, so like I was like, I shouldn't go through it. But like something in me just like, we had been arguing a lot. That's what it was. We had been arguing a lot. Like he was going out and just doing all these things that he had never done the whole relationship. Like he was never the going out type. It was always me and I actually caused problems in the relationship. So it was just weird to me that he was doing things that he had never done. And so I go through his watch and the weekend before my birthday, he had had like a get together at his house. And you see that he invited this girl and this girl saying like thank you for having me over and blah blah and i was like wait what like he told me everyone that was gonna be there except this girl and so dude my 21st birthday goes to fucking shit because he makes it about me and how i'm the issue and how i'm this and how i'm that and i should have been like go home make that drive back to miami fuck you i'm enjoying my 21st birthday like nah he should have never drove from miami in the first place he already checked out of the relationship and started talking to other girls. He's tired of arguing with her all of the time and tired of her going out to flirt with other guys. Goofy drove from another city to basically break up with his girlfriend. So a guy that I had known for over six years and we had been like best friends, you know, trying to see if we was going to make it a relationship, whatever. So he moved to New York. And so Valentine's weekend last year, 2020, pre-panini pandemic whatever you want to call it i drove 10 hours from south carolina up to new york this been valentine's weekend with him get up to new york in the room that i paid for like a dummy he came over we went to dinner which really wasn't dinner because it was burgers and some fries and then he came back to the room and he was like oh let me go get my bag from my apartment so i was like all right cool whatever this negro never came back <laughs> Didn't hear from him. So I took my 10 hour drive back to South Carolina. That was an expensive burger and fries. I'm guessing she catfished him. He saw how she really looked like in real life, then decided to dip. Probably showed up with a bonnet to the date. For the date, if it's at your house, you just put a blanket out. If it's at their house, make sure to ask for a blanket earlier in the evening. Okay, okay. Then at some point, you put the blanket over top of you, and then once the blanket's on top of you, you can start to move closer 
Okay. Because okay. you ca- you can't see. You can't tell. You can't tell with the blanket. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then eventually a corner of the blanket gets on them. Uh-huh, uh-huh, and so uh-huh. they can get under the blanket. And so uh-huh, then uh-huh. you're touching uh-huh, uh-huh. under the blanket. Uh-huh. And then that's how you get all cuddled up. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. It's a r- it's worked. That's Almost good. every time I've ever used it, no. there's no pressure. It's like the whole, it's a better version of like the men like yawning and then putting their arm totally, over totally. you. Totally, totally. And then if you really just like are tired of waiting, you're like, do you want some of the blanket? You Cold? Want- are you chilly? Yeah, m- sometimes men are a little bit too masculine for you to say, are you <laughs> chilly? They're like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, like, do you want the blanket? Do you want to share? Do you want to share the blanket? And then they'll be like, yeah. And that's how you do it. You just help the whole world. Yeah. Take my advice. Give me credit, queens.